agreement for hospitality workers. We knew there were a few of them, but we did an actual count. It was around 160,000 workers, 160,000 hospo workers. The vast majority are on minimum wage. It's certainly less than the living wage. What it takes to actually live decently in this country. We've engaged with them. We did a massive survey, 3,000 of them responded when we started communicating directly with those workers. The vast majority had never had a chance to collectively organise before, because that's the problem. That's what fair pay agreements were about. You know, we've been doing, for, for 20 years, we've been organising hospitality workers, but we've only been able to do a fraction to unionise a fraction of those workers. Oh, yeah. And that's because they're spread out in lots of little cafes, bars, pubs, and also because in the 90s, the unions that organised hospitality workers were smashed. Were smashed. The hotel workers in this country used to have a union that was 60,000 strong. 60,000 members of the hotel workers union in the 80s. In the 80s. Smashed. What FPAs? So the opportunity to was for workers who never had the opportunity to have a bit of collective bargaining to get off the minimum wage to actually what we were able to do first was actually not even to improve the pay conditions well above. The main problem is that people don't even get the minimum conditions. Why is that? Because they don't have collective bargaining, they don't have the ability to organise and make sure what they get what is supposed to happen under the law is already happening. Basic stuff like breaks, like getting your breaks at work. Most hospitality workers miss out on breaks, either regularly or sometimes. Many don't get paid for extra hours work. They work for free. Many have reported working for free. Pay? Over 60% get less than the living wage, and half of them are over 25 years old. Half of them are over 25 years old and don't even get enough to live on. That's why we need fair pay agreements. This government's going to repeal them. All right? Okay, you do that. But let me tell you, David Seymour, and Act and National, and New Zealand First, that employers we're dealing with aren't that confident, you can see it, they aren't that confident that in three years you'll still be around. And we're going to organise in the meantime, because we can't do it for fair pay agreements, the aim was to allow collective bargaining for workers, but if we can't do it the new way, we'll do it the old way. And we are going to organise those workers, some of them at least, and we're going to get them collective agreements one way or another. And this government will be doing this in three years, we'll be doing this in six years, we'll be doing this in a hundred years, David Seymour. You, this government, will be gone long before then. So see you in a while, buddy.